got diagnosed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Getting okay. We're recording this, so for anybody who's had to work or busy, unable to listen, they'll be able to go back to this. Um, I live here in Rhode Island. I'm now unfortunately 72, getting to be an old lady here. Got diagnosed at the age of 54, which is inexcusable. So it became my mission after getting the hard diagnosis that it was important to pass it forward with anything we can learn to help ourselves with this crazy out of control condition. I started with NIH research when I first got diagnosed, was told I was one of 5,000 people being um, with this condition. They called me this past summer and now said it's down to one out of 500 actually walk around with EDS, many of whom never even realized they have it, which is pretty heartbreaking. Um, so anything you can do to pay it forward to the next person, you start hearing these bizarre um, descriptions of their condition, if it sounds familiar, just put it in their brain to, to have their doctor consider the idea of Ehlers-Danlos. Many people diagnosed with um, fibromyalgia are actually walking around with EDS and don't know about things they can do to help themselves. So what I'm going to do is give you some tips I've learned through my years of dealing with this crazy condition, things that um, have helped to improve the quality of my life. I know many of us end up, I lost my career of teaching. I lost being a master swimmer. I can only kick on my back and scully with my hands on the side. I can't because my neck's now fused. But I have to be honest with you, I'm actually better now than I was when I first got diagnosed. But can't lie to you, it's been many long surgeries to get there. Just a disclosure, because I am representing the US Pain Foundation, um, this is information should not be considered professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. It's for the purpose only and represents my opinions alone. Uh, these are suggestions, what's helped me to improve the quality of my life. And I hope that this might also help you in your quality in the future. I don't normally share something like this because I try to dwell on the positive and not the negative, but I'm just showing you some of this just to make it real to you that I am the real deal. I have had been through a horror for quite a while, went years not being diagnosed, people not understanding what was wrong, like all of us being judged by medical people and even friends and family as to, you know, maybe we're hypochondriacs, but yet I spent four years in a wheelchair. I've had 26 surgeries. And for me to be able to tell you at 72, I'm doing better now than I was, should be hope. I hope gives you hope for your future that with a lot of hard work that's never quite over, that maybe you can improve the quality of your life too. And am I perfect now? Of course not, I'm not, I never will be, but I've learned to live better around the situation. This is the after. I showed you the before, which is graphic and I don't like to look out personally. This is the after. I've become very involved with the US Pain Foundation on the board and also co-directors with my husband for uh, US Pain Foundation for Cannabis um, uh, Advocacy and um, been real involved. And that was a picture of my service dog I had for quite a long time. I lost Maggie two years ago, um, literally saved my life when I got her six days after she came home with me. I had stopped breathing. She jumped up on the hospital bed, repositioned me with my BiPAP and brought me back to life and internally grateful for what this girl did for me. That's my husband, Stuart. So EDS, let's get to what we're dealing with. There are 13 different subtypes with various levels of severity and impact. Some are able to go live a, de a decent life with little pain. Others cope with constant subluxations and even dislocations. Some patients also have involvement of the spine, spinal cord, such as tethered cord, instability of the neck, and carry one malformation. We're all different, and that's one of the things that drives poor doctors crazy, because when a person walks in with diabetes, it's a little more clear what to do. You walk in with EDS, and it's like, oh, shoot, where do we begin? We are all different situations. So here's what I'm going to co cover for you today. For body care, we're going to talk about neurosurgeon inflammation, manual PT, staying physically active, the Cusack protocol, controlling blood pressure, quality of sleep and pain control, orthopedic issues, low dose naltroxin, daily safety trips, a tip, excuse me, mass cell, and also the mind and the, the spirit. I went to Springfield College and they always believed in all three, the body, the mind, and the spirit. So I decided I'd include that in here because it, it is something we have to constantly work on. So we will start with the body. 
there are three issues that you need to be careful to have monitored if, if symptoms de develop. One is called the tethered cord. It's the lower base of your spine. Um, for me, I was having problems with my bladder. Out of the blue, the bladder prolapsed out. They, and that's how I actually ended up getting diagnosed at 54. I had the surgery done. No one suspected anything weird. And a year after the surgery, it prolapsed again. That's when it became really clear there was something wrong. Um, and it was the doctor here in Rhode Island that uh, they sent me to that finally decided I must have EDS and um, confirmed it with a geneticist. So tethered cord, if you're feeling things like your legs feel weird, you're having urinary problems, you do not want to ignore this. If it does not get better, then it's something you really should have addressed by a neurosurgeon just to keep an eye on it. Same thing with carry one malformation. I was blessed with not having that as a problem. Many people do deal with that, uh, headaches, and it's I, my heart breaks for those people, but you do not want to ignore that either. Um, that's your, sir, your tonsils dripping down and putting pressure onto your spine, and it's a very unpleasant thing. Many of us also have problems with cranial instability, um, so the head of the neck. I've actually had two fusions. It has limited some things I'm able to do in my life, but to be honest with you, it was the best surgery I ever had in my life. It gave me life back. I got to the point I was having catatonic episodes within minutes of C4 slipping out of place and C3. It was affecting breathing at that point. So I'm lucky to be alive. And you know, if you get to the point that you have done everything you can, you've strengthened that area, and you still are not getting better, please do not ignore these three issues. Make sure you have somebody following you and don't just go to any old neurosurgeon. There's a list we have out of neurosurgeons that specialize with EDS. You want to make sure you take the effort to get to them or it's too many times we have testing done, sent home and told everything looks fine. But you have to have somebody that understands and how to read the testing of, of this condition with connective tissue. Inflammation is a huge problem. Food sensitivity is one way to begin to address it. There's a simple food sensitivity blood test that can offer tremendous assistance in reducing reactions and inflammation. And what the one I had recently, um, last time I had it done was called MRT, food sensitivity testing. You have a simple blood test and then you receive a booklet of what it is your levels are at, what you absolutely need to stay away from in the red zone and so on. All I can say is it's heartbreaking when you read the results at first. Um, there'll be many wonderful good foods for you that you suddenly find out are actually causing inflammation in your body. But I'm living proof that if you listen to that result and pay attention and stay away from those foods, you will feel dramatically different. It's, it's unfortunately really worth it. It will help you. Um, you need to find a knowledgeable dietitian that will help guide you through this when you get the results. Another thing is drug sensitivities. We're very lucky. Not only are we reactive to food, we're also reactive to many medications. When I was a baby, my mother was told that I seemed to be allergic to my own body. Well, that was just about correct. By the time they finally did a DNA drug sensitivity testing, which a doctor in Wisconsin finally asked me if I'd do it because they did not know how to help me in the hospital it came back showing that I can't metabolize any of the opiates, aspirin, Tylenol, Benadryl, ibuprofen, nothing. And the only thing left, even missing a slight enzyme for that was cannabis. And I just about <laughs> laughed in, at Dr. Trofer's face when he suggested that I try. I thought I hadn't even thought about it, but yet that is what I use. I grow here, I create it into an oil, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And that's what allows me rest at night and calm into the body. So it is, it, for many of us, cannabis is the answer because we are drug reactive. So this DNA drug sens sensitivity testing is complicated. You need to make sure when you get the results and it's a simple taking a, a um, Q-tip into your mouth, swabbing it, and then sending it off to their lab. And then you get the results. The results are confusing. So it's not something you're gonna understand as well as you need a, a good, um, a pharmacist that will help you with determining what is safe and what is not safe. Many times you'll find a compounding pharmacist is probably a better one to work with after that. But you, you will find that if you can get that test done, 
that also will help reduce inflammation and help you to feel better because there's a good chance right now you're putting medications into your body that should be helping you that actually you're not metabolizing. They're making you feel worse. And unfortunately, we're very prone to candida. Um, there's a simple blood test you can have done to, to confirm it. Um, there's oral medication to clear it out. But even if you do take the medication to clear it out, you then have to remember candida is fed by sugar and lots of carbs. So unfortunately, again, we're back to that diet issue that you want to be careful not overdosing on sugar and carbs because um, that will help. So if you're walking around, you have unexplained gas and bloating, you might want to think about candida as an issue. Manual sacral therapy, physical therapy. Um, it's strengthening of very specific muscles. So your ligaments and tendons are being compromised because the muscles are an overload because they are are not working correctly. So the muscle's taking on the job of ligament, tendon, and itself. So it's got three jobs in one. What does it do? It goes into spasm because it's on overload. That spasm then pulls and causes your subluxations and or even to dislocations. There is a book written by Kevin Muldowney and Kathleen Living Life to the Fullest with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And it has a workout that would be a daily commitment. Um, it's, it's very helpful if you use this book that you do through the guidance of a person who does manual therapy. Here in Rhode Island, we are very lucky because we have two physical therapist offices. We have Healy Physical Therapy and Muldowney that both deal with EDS, bless their soul because we're complicated and never better. And here they help us out um, with helping us to learn to strengthen ourselves. It's really worth it um, if you hit a roadblock you don't wanna keep pushing it because it might mean that one of those three issues I mentioned at the beginning, let's this, if there's instability in the neck and, and it's a, a situation that needs surgical repair, then you have to be careful not to advance on doing these exercises. So it's very important to work with those of you that live here in Rhode Island, you're lucky, get involved with these physical therapy offices and they will help guide you as to how far you can go into this protocol. Um, but that has tremendously helped me. And along with that is physical activity. We're all at different stages with this condition and different abilities of how we can move our body. But when you live with chronic pain, you get emotionally and physically worn down and sometimes feel that you just have no energy to exercise. But living with EDS makes it all the more important that you need to move. We need to keep our muscles strong and we need to be sure we get that cardio workout to keep our bodies in the best shape as possible. So consider things that are safe for you. Everybody's circumstance is different. Stationary bike, walking if you're able. I mean, I went four years in a wheelchair, I couldn't do the walking. Um, a pool, I can't use my arms and I can't do rotary breathing with my neck anymore, but I, can, I get in my back for 40 minutes, kick on my back and do sculling with my hands on the side. At least it's something and I get the cardio in. So try really hard if you can to keep your body moving with whatever you're dealing with, with your circumstance. Cusack protocol. I had heard about this. I waited over a year and finally met a friend who was on it and having such success. I finally broke down. I just wasn't interested in taking more stuff. But then I heard the story about this. This protocol was developed by a woman who she and her daughters have EDS. Her daughters were, I believe, in high school at the time. One was in a wheelchair, neck braces. They used to go mountain climbing, rock climbing as a family. And all of a sudden, they were just so limited. So she was determined to work with a doctor and science, scientist to figure out what is it that an EDS body is missing. So this protocol becomes a daily commitment to what is not in our system that should have been there. So I buy all these products. There's a list that you can go to if you look up Kuzak protocol. Um, you start one item at a time. Um, to, you don't. You want to make sure whatever you're putting into your body first is being accepted and metabolized. If you go three, four days and you're feeling just fine, then you keep adding each of the items that are listed one at a time, added on. Um, so um, it becomes a lifelong process to use it. I don't mind at all. I buy all my items through Amazon. Um, with the pandemic, I've I've been able to continue on it. 
Um, it's nutritional supplements. It improves the quality of our connective tissue integrity, and it helps digestive symptoms also with people with EDS. So something to consider that I um, really have no regrets and I will stay on for the rest of my life. The only thing I have found is a couple of the pills since my neck fusion, a couple of the pills I got stuck trying to swallow down. So I actually pull them apart, put them on a spoon with a little food and take them down that way instead of choking on that. Another issue we have is blood pressure. Many of us live with lower blood pressure than normal. And there are a few things I have found that have been very helpful for this. Number one, really you need to be careful and drink a lot of water. Um, I would get a container and figure out what is your amount of water you should be having and make a pack with yourself that you stick with that. You know, like don't eat your lunch until you're sure you figured out what you should be drinking before that and, and get that liquid into you. Not, not any old liquid, we're specifically meaning water. Um, another thing you can do if you have lower blood pressure is elevate the frame of your bed. If you look at the picture on the right, you can see the bed is lifted up from the head. So you're literally on a 30 degree angle. That will help with keeping your blood pressure more level. If you sleep flat and you have lower blood pressure, that becomes a problem. And also salting food. So many people, especially in my age in the 70s, are told to stay away from salt. We are the opposite with EDS. Most of us need to salt our food to help keep our elevation of blood pressure. So just something to think about. And don't forget, um, you get the point of passing out, which I have had happen. Fractured both my legs doing it one day, melted right in front of my husband. He grabbed me and it was too late. Both legs went. Um, you don't want to have damage like I did. So if that happens, get to your doctor. If you feel like you're starting to have issues of passing out, get to a, a uh, doctor and I happen to be put on mitodrine, um, which helps, I take it three times a day and it keeps my blood pressure elevated um, and it's really worth it. So I would never go anywhere without that medication. And all EDSers should have an uh, echocardiogram or echo test yearly, just to keep an, an eye out for your body and making sure things are developing correctly. And now we get to quality of sleep with pain control. You need to accept that you cannot take this journey on your own. You need to address your pain in order to have the opportunity to attempt to regain some sense of normalcy in your life again. You might be like many of us and have trouble metabolizing certain medications. When I was still teaching before I left my career, not understanding about Ehlers-Danlos, I got to the point that I reacted to so many medications, I just stopped taking medication for pain. Because to me, it made no sense to react to medication and also live with pain. So I figured I might as well just live with the pain and not have the reaction on top of it. So you want to find, and that's where the DNA drug sensitivity is helpful. You want to find a medication your body is personally able to metabolize. If you're stuck like I was, then consider trying cannabis. It is... Um, I, I was scared. I thought the doctor was an idiot when he suggested it. I laughed at his face. I know he remembers this, but yet I went home that night and took cannabis. I also had sarcoidosis in my chest, so I was not able to ever consider smoking anything. And I had to immediately try it in a different form. So I take it in oil form at night that I swallow before I go to bed about an hour before. And that actually, the first time I took it, I was scared to death. I just assumed I was going to be whacked out and high as a kite. And why would I want to live a life like that? And instead, I actually went to sleep and woke up the next day. And I suddenly realized I hadn't done that at all that I could remember. And that is on most nights, unless breathing gets compromised, I rest. I get quality sleep. Many EDS respond beautifully to cannabis. It can be taken as simple doses, as I said, at night. Um, it allows you to sleep, but also gives you pain relief to the body as well in, as into the next day. At 72, I take my oil at night and all day long the next day, I actually don't take anything. Again, I've had 26 surgeries to get to where I am today, um, but I don't need it. I'm finding the cannabis into the next day keeps my body in a calmer mode than I am without it. So I would never not use my cannabis at this point. And I do have a recipe here. This will go on the site, um, on our EDS site, um, when I get the recording, in case you want to use that or you're welcome to get hold of me. And um, I'll be happy to send you the recipe. It's a very simple process. And then we move on to orthopedic issues. 
If you develop issues with your bone subluxing and strengthening seems to not be helping, there's talk of surgery. Please be sure that they use cadaver tendons to hold your bones in position, not yours. I remember thinking, why would I want to keep going out to this wonderful doctor in Wisconsin here from Rhode Island when I first got diagnosed and couldn't find anybody even paying attention to our condition? Maybe I could just go right up to Boston. I went up to the head of one of the hospitals up there, an orthopedic head. He had his little entourage of doctors following him around and made this point of saying, well, that's just overkill for this doctor wanting to use a cadaver tendon and her, we'll just use hers. I walked out of the appointment. My husband and I went home and made the appointment to go have surgery up from Wisconsin, because why would you want to use my defected ligaments or tendons to hold me together if they weren't holding me together in the first place? You want cadaver tendons. You want somebody's healthy tendons, and it's worked. Uh, I've had a lot of my surgeries were on my legs when I was back in the wheelchair. Um, your ligaments and tendons are not able to do the job properly due to this condition. Also, you want to consider using arch supports. Many of us have flat feet. An arch support made specifically for you can be extremely helpful. I no longer wear, my closet is a pair of sneakers, that's it. Um, I find with the arch support in a sneaker that I can tie on and you wanna get a good quality shoe. I, I go for Brooks and I know there's other good qualities um, that will really help you with your legs and your stability of walking. So unfortunately <laughs> heels and things like that are pretty tough. Some people can get away with it, I, I never could. Um, Dr. Chopra introduced me to low-dose low naltroxin. Dose again, another thing I'm thinking, and nah, I don't want to take anything else. And again, I was starting to hear really good reports of people that are trying it. So I've been on this for a number of years now. It has been demonstrated to reduce symptoms, uh, sim symptom severity in conditions such as fibromyalgia, Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, and complex regional pain syndrome. Those are pretty tough conditions. So if it's helping that, it was something to consider for EDS. It, it may operate as a novel anti-inflammatory agent in the central nervous system via action on microcolagogial cells. I'm not pronouncing that right. Um, I feel it helps me to actually maintain a more positive attitude, believe it or not, um, more pain reduction and functioning in general. So I, something, if somebody suggests it to you, I would say consider trying it. I don't have a high dose of it and I've been on it for a number of years via Dr. Chopra and I, I'm very pleased with the results. Okay, these are simple daily safety tips from a chair and using a car. Um, to prevent upslips, never sit in a chair or in a car and reach down leaning to your side to pick something up because we are so loose. Our ligaments and tendons are so loose. If you lean over to your side, you're then popping your sacrum out of position. And I didn't know this. I used to drive all the way out into Connecticut at one point for PT before I, I found Muldowney's and, and Healy's. And I'd drive all the way out there and they'd work on me and I'd get in the car. I was so excited. And then I'd start to drive home, getting in the car. And I was in tears for an hour driving back home. And I didn't realize that this the my positioning and moving around was causing this to just shift right back out. So you either shift your body to the direction you need to pick something up and then lean forward towards that object um, to get out of the chair and then bend your knees to get down to that object. I got so bad that that's where my service dog came in. Maggie would pick up the items on the floor. Uh, since I've lost her, she died two years ago. I, I try to ask my husband when I'm patient with life and don't feel too, too guilty asking him. And then there's the times I get stubborn and I just reach down and Go and lift something up like an idiot. And for me, many times it even pops my hip out. Um, so how we move is really important. You want to avoid twisting to the side to help your sacrum stay in position. Um, try to get in and out of car that you don't have to lift your, your, lift your butt, up, butt up high or sink way down to get into the seat. The best car for you is something you can literally go from standing right putting your butt onto the seat. If you're, again, dipping down or lifting way up, that's going to help move your sacrum again. So if you're looking for a car at some point, try the seats out. Don't, you know, dipping down is just the worst thing. And if you can keep your knees at a 90 degree angle when you're in that seat, that will keep you better in position too. If you have to stretch your legs out forward, 
that is the problem and that will probably shift you out of place. For lifting objects, it's helpful to limit your lifting and weight of objects to help prevent subluxations of your arms and your ribs. If you can possibly limit lifting no more than five pounds, it's safer for your body. When I was over, ever told this, I thought, I don't know how I would have raised my children. I raised four sons and they certainly were more than five pounds. And I walked around with those little kids for years, holding them on my hip like everybody else. And you know, I didn't learn this fortunately until after I raised my kids, but weight is because what it does is stretch and pull down your arms. So you want to be careful. You don't want to pull and stretch those ligaments and tendons that are already compromised. So you want, another thing to think about is using a fanny pack strapped around your waist, as opposed to putting something on your shoulder that's weighing it down. Um, and that will help to keep that, that uh, achiness in your shoulders. Now for pillow, many of us deal with issues with the neck. It's a pain in the neck, it's very uncomfortable. Um, I have found finally that a Therapeutica pillow helps to keep my head exact position. It prevents subluxations that can occur with innocent movement during the sleep. So the pillow I have has a little hole in it for my head. My head slips into that. I literally, because of my neck fusion, tend to lean a little bit to the left. So I actually have a, um, a towel stuffed on the side of my neck. It's really romantic appearance. Um, and um, that really helps to keep me from, I used to sleep on my side. I used to start on my stomach. I can't do that anymore without shifting out of position. So the more I can get into bed safely, the better I will wake up the next morning. I, I'm guessing some of you also wake up in the morning sometimes and find that something suddenly hurts and you think it didn't hurt when I went to bed. And many times it's just things because we get relaxed when we sleep that you know things can shift. So you wanna keep yourself safe. Um, the other thing, um, let me just go back one on this one. I also put a uh, towel under both arms because my shoulders will very easily sublux out even though they both have had surgeries. Um, a towel under there keeps them, if they, if my arms go down onto the mattress itself, many times I'll wake up with my shoulders subluxed. If I put the towels underneath, and this came from physical therapists, um, that helps to keep the, the shoulders into position. For mast cell, um, this is defined as a cell filled with blossophyll granules, I'm totally mispronouncing, found in numbers, in connective tissue and releasing histine and other substances during inflammatory and allergic reactions. Those that suffer from these reactions struggle tremendously. Be sure to bring this condition up to your doctor if you feel you're not reacting normally to the foods and the life around you. A simple way to begin to address this is by taking daily Allegra, 180 milligrams and Pepsid. And if that does not help, then you need to find a doc doctor that can help you. Um, we do have a list of people that can help. Um, it's not something that's in your head. You are, it's a real problem, many EDSers. Um, so that's, uh, for me, the Allegra and the Pepsid, I was lucky that did the trick. Many people go way beyond that and need much more help. And there are doctors around here now in Rhode Island in this area that do address this very well. So keep that in mind. For the mind. It's okay to be upset and angry when you get diagnosed with this condition. I thought after all the years of not understanding what was wrong and keeping a record, and I had all these, these notebooks of all my test results, I figured I was gonna figure out what was wrong with me and I was gonna get myself all better. And then I finally get a name. I was so excited, I went home, looked it up, and then I'm saying no cure, but that's not acceptable. Um, so you have a right to take time to grieve. It's okay to allow yourself to mourn the loss of your past life, but life will move on. It will never be exactly as you've known it, but you still have a life to live. You just don't want to get stuck staying in the grieving mode forever. You know, you know it's okay to be upset. It took me about a year. I, I was alone. There was nobody around here that could even talk to me about EDS. I finally found uh, Lynn Sanders out in Wisconsin, which is how I got and connected to her orthopedic surgeon out there, who spoke to me almost every day for a year. She was so kind to me. She was running a support group out there. And she helped me to realize I needed to go back on and live my life. It wasn't going to be the same life, 
but I still was here. And I think it was really important for me to think about my children and they were watching me. And even though my kids are now adults, they still watch how I handle whatever's given to me in life. And I didn't want them to look at me as somebody who just gave up and gave in and that was it. I wanted them to see that I was fighting and trying the best I could. So allow yourself to grieve, but then figure out how you can pick up and try to move on with what you have to work with. One of the worst things you can do is allow yourself to get isolated. I did 26 surgeries. I really had to work on staying connected to people and somebody I could find. In one case, when I had my tethered cord surgery, there was a gentleman from the West Coast that had it the same time in New York with me. And we stayed connected through our recovery and helped each other out. So you never know who that person might be, but it's, it's good to find somebody you can talk to that understands. You want to try to find hope. I know that sounds silly, but hope is so important if you just feel like you can never be better. And that's why I'm hoping seeing an older woman like me who's dealt with this for years now, telling you she's done all these things and she has a better quality of life than when she first diagnosed. I hope that will give you some hope. And you also want to find some purpose. I lost my career. I lost being a swim coach. I lost being a master swimmer. But I found my purpose back with U.S. Pain Foundation, um, working to help other people living with pain. So who knows what it might be, but you still matter and you still have something to, to give in life, even though I know you're having a tough time with EDS. And you want to try to be proactive. Like I said, there's people you're going to meet someday, and it was happening before the pandemic at least once a week, my husband and I would hear somebody describe, because they knew we worked for the Pain Foundation, their symptoms. And we'd think, my gosh, has anybody ever thought of EDS? And they'd look at me and, what's that? So, you know, you might be able to help that next person. And you want to try to keep your mind as sharp as possible. Reading for me is limited because of my fused neck. I can read the paper holding up way up high. I can do the computer but I can no longer read a novel. It's heartbreaking, but it is the life I have. So I have to find other things I can do. I can still write. I can still use my voice. I can still write, uh, thank goodness. There's adult coloring, Sudoku, scramble words, crossword puzzles, music, puzzles, sewing, painting, uh, Wordle. I mean, there's just so many different things out there. Find something you can do. Maybe it's not what you wanted to do originally, but find something that can keep that mind going because that really does help you. And then we have the spirit. Try to remind yourself each day of the things you are grateful for. I know this sounds really silly, but every morning after we get the coffee made, I go into the room, close the door, and I just go through my mind what I do have that I'm lucky to still have. And it's a very positive experience to go through. And I love it. And then if this, if it's not a rainy day and the stars are out, don't laugh at this. I literally stand outside in the cold or in the rain or whatever. And I, you know, if the stars are there, of course it's not rain. On a clear day, I look up and I look at the stars and something about that fills me up. I know it sounds silly, but find something that makes you happy. And again, try not to get us isolated. I found, especially when recovering from surgeries, contacts in life become extremely limited. Uh, it's hard for other people to understand that we still need friends. It's so easy. I think we've all had the experience when we're become isolated from, you know, medical issues that friends that you might have gone off and done something with and you can't, sometimes those friendships start to slip. So it's really important to find out what you can fill that with. Many of us have experienced our friendships diminishing uh, due to either being judged that we look fine and or just that we're not, uh, not able to keep up with these activities. So look for new ways to stay connected, as I said, and not feel isolated. Local support group, online support groups, reach out to others that are also trying to learn to cope with chronic issues. Simple acts like visiting a rehab center, nursing home, reaching out to others also struggling helps to put your life into a better perspective. Again, you matter, you care, and you have something to offer. So sometimes if we can be around people that are also having a difficult time, it helps you to, to cope with what you're fight, facing. And I, I found this and kind of love it. My to-do list for today, count my blessings, practice kindness, 
let go of what I can't control, listen to my heart, be productive yet calm, and just breathe. And these are flowers from my garden that I hope to have again next year. Um, this is my contact information, ellen at uspainfoundation.org. So if anybody would like to reach out privately, uh, that would be great. And if anybody has any questions, um, please unmute yourself. And Casey, are you on by any chance? I don't know if she is. Okay. Um, <laughs> Casey, can you 